Carry VGW Group. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. Town mostly sunny. 63. I'm Todd Halliday. News Radio Wham 1180. Next news at 1030. Breaking news when it happens. Anytime. Another hour with Bob Lonsberry starts now on News Radio Wham 1180. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. And troops, like always, I appreciate you showing up for muster. And I hope all is cool and copacetic. Uh, on your end. I'm going to be joined by a cybersecurity expert, lecturer, professor, all that smart stuff up at the Rochester Institute of Technology, uh, Jonathan Weissman. Sir, good morning. Welcome to the broadcast. Good morning, Bob. How are you doing today? Hey, pretty well. Uh, uh, and I uh, apologize for intruding on your time. It, but you just gotten back from vacation? Yep. Uh, we were in uh, New York City last week. Nice. What you, uh, Did you do exciting stuff or, or what did you do? Yeah, we uh, saw the Statue of Liberty, Ellis Island, uh, went to a bunch of baseball games. Outstanding. Outstanding. Our family's going down in October, uh, Columbus Day. It, it, w- w- while you were away, there were some stuff emerged about maybe there was a big giant theft of essentially everybody's Social Security number or something like that. What do we know about that, sir? And how should we re- react to it, please? Yeah, this is a pretty crazy story. There's a company known as N. PD, National Public Data, and what they do is they provide information to employers, investigators, organizations conducting background checks on individuals, and what NPD does is they scrape data from public record databases, they take information from national and state databases, court records, and they even access non-public sources to get information about individuals, and then they sell this to companies looking to do background checks. What happened was, as is the case with a lot of organizations, they were breached, and the information about lots of people, including social security numbers, current and past addresses, phone numbers, criminal records, information about relatives, has now been dumped on the dark web. Who who is the recipient of this stuff? Who is the dark web, please? Well, the the dark web refers to a uh, part of the internet where you got a bunch of websites that are not indexed by search engines, and you can only access it with specific browsers that use special software, and uh, there's encryption going on, and there's uh, relays to preserve anonymity, and cyber criminals, as you might imagine make great usage of this particular infrastructure uh, with a lot of illegal activity. And they originally wanted to sell these pieces of information, but then they just dumped it. So the original number uh, was 2.9 billion people that was going around when the story first broke. But analysts have figured out that a lot of rows, a lot of records in this dump represent a single person, and they're estimating it to be around 900 million people now that have their information out there. Mm. Jonathan Wiseman teaches at uh, RIT. There are you know, some 300, 30, or 40 million people in America. I get there are other, uh, elsewhere in North America or Europe or Asia. Where, where are these other people from, please, sir? Well, supposedly it's the United States, the United Kingdom, and Canada okay. that are affected. People in those. In, in my mind, I I don't know if I'm so worried about identity thieves. I think they long since would have got us. I, I worry about, like, foreign nations. Like, I, I presume that China accesses all this, and I imagine they've got some big giant database where they know all of us and all the stuff about us. It, it, is stuff like that potentially real, or is it the conventional criminal identity thief who we should most fear in a situation like this, sir? Well, well you can never rule out China and Russia and other foreign uh, nation-states adversaries, but the focus right now is identity theft, financial fraud, uh, applying for loans, opening up credit cards, tax fraud, and more, because now that information is out there. It's very important for everybody at this point in time to freeze your credit, for sure, freeze your credit with the three major credit reporting agencies as soon as possible. I'm ignorant. How do you do that? Well, there are websites for, uh, for Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. It's a very simple process to freeze your credit, which basically means that 
your credit file is locked, and if you need that file opened by uh, an organization, you could lift it temporarily. But if your credit is frozen, nobody can use the information in there to open up uh, credit card accounts, uh, apply for loans, or even perform identity theft. When, uh, Jonathan Weissman teaches, of course, at RIT and is nationally and internationally prominent uh, in the area of cybersecurity, his field of expertise. Do uh, uh, this and the, uh, information being out there, are, are banks and governments, law enforcement agencies, are they in some sort of defensive posture? Are they anticipating that there will be this wave of fraud and identity theft? Or, or what, what are we doing defensively uh, in, at an institutional level, please, sir? Well, I haven't heard of any such postures by, by the government. Uh, identity theft and this, this type of fraud has been out there since forever. But just so happens now with this dump, there are a lot of people that are vulnerable that weren't necessarily vulnerable in the past. Mm. Um, it seems in this situation, uh, this surveilling agency or whatever else like that, the, the, the information gleaners, we, we didn't sign up for that. We didn't give this information out. We, this was completely done to us. We are, we right. are to a degree victims of this. Oh, absolutely. A- NPD didn't get anybody's permission or consent to aggregate and, and collect that information. They, they do use public sources out there, so uh, the, the information is out there in, in most cases, but supposedly they also use some non-public sources. But certainly out of these around uh, 900 million people, not a single one has given consent. So, yeah, we are, we are certainly uh, vulnerable. Our information is all over the place, and that's, of course, why it's very important to be, be very careful on online and using social media in terms of giving as little information as possible to be able to identify yourself and to aggregate with other information. Hey, Jonathan Wiseman's at RIT, cybersecurity expert. Is, is, the, is the horse out of the barn already on this? It seems like over the years there have been so many breaches at so many places, so many records compromised. There can't be very many of us who who can presume that our our information is secure. Can there be? No, in fact, it's the opposite. You've got to assume that your information is out there, and you've got to do your due diligence to minimize any potential impact. Yeah, and that's contact the credit agencies and freeze your credit. Well, for sure, freeze your credit. Also, monitoring your accounts, your financial accounts, very, very important to see if there's anything suspicious so you can act immediately. Uh, as far as your, your online security with accounts, it's very, very important to never reuse the same password for multiple sites because in the event that your credentials are compromised on one site, the cyber criminals can use them for other sites. That's called a uh, credential stuffing attack. And if you get victimized on one site, you could be victimized on multiple sites. So never, ever reuse passwords for more than one site. And it's also, of course, very important to have a strong password. And the best way you can make a strong password is to make a really, really long password. And the the tip that I like to give out is come up with a song, think about a song, and use the first letter of each word of the song, maybe the beginning or the chorus, as your password. Just don't tell anybody the songs you like. Mm. That's an easy way to come up with a password that's 15 or so characters long, which makes you much, much stronger in terms of your online security. It's very smart. It's also very important to use multi-factor authentication, which means when you sign into a site, it's not just your password that you need. You need to okay that authentication with an app. And those apps are either going to be in the form of a Google Authenticator app or a Microsoft Authenticator app. Studies have shown that text messages through uh, SMS, not a form of strong multi-factor authentication. So every account should have a strong password, a unique password, and you should be using Google Authenticator or Microsoft Authenticator as well. Uh, is uh, Jonathan Wiseman of RIT, cybersecurity expert, do any any idea uh, who the perpetrator was or what sort of entity the perpetrator was and why, failing to get money, they would just dump it publicly? 
Yeah, this is supposedly a, uh, a cyber criminal group known as USDOD. It's quite an interesting name. Mm-hmm. And I believe it happened around April of this year, April uh, 2024. But they didn't get the money they were looking for, and they said, eh, we'll just dump it. Uh, screw the world. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently. Do um, you have any good news in the cybersecurity realm, sir? <laughs> I don't know if cybersecurity good news is a thing. Usually, no news is good news. Yeah. And anytime you're hearing something out of the world of cybersecurity, it's bad news and things you need to take really uh, immediate action upon. Yeah. This, and, and Jonathan Wiseman, a cybersecurity expert at RIT, it, this is like a, a dumb question. I apologize. It's my like sort of fantasy thing. It, when when some of these criminals do stuff like this, you wonder about a kinetic response. Is it possible to find out where they are and then maybe send SEAL Team Six or something like that? But is it uh, uh, when we're when there's cyber criminality, is it possible to find where the actual living, breathing human perpetrator is? No, a lot, a lot of times, in fact, just about all times, they're behind many different layers of abstraction and of obfuscation. They're running servers from servers, and they're VPNing, and they're doing all forms of uh, concealing their original identity and shielding their identity. And it's not going to be possible in just about all cases to trace it to an actual individual or an actual uh, a perpetrator. A lot of times we do know about these cyber criminal groups, but who they are and their origins are very rarely found out. Yeah. Well, that's no good, sir. That gives me nobody to shoot. So uh, you've <laughs> left me completely high and dry. The, the, the great Jonathan Wiseman uh, telling the world about cybersecurity from right here at RIT. A tangential, unrelated question. Have you yet seen President Munson's uh, uh, Wizard of RIT welcome video? I have. Uh, RIT is very, uh, very good in terms of yeah. excellence in terms of the videos involving President Munson <laughs> and uh, parodies and spoofs. He's a great actor. Yeah, in all honesty, in all honesty, he was. It was it was wonderfully well done. All right, sir. Anything else we ought to know about going on in the world? Well, just keep in touch with me, and I'll keep you up to date. I appreciate it. And people can follow you. You have quite a social media presence. Where should they be looking, sir? Absolutely. On X, you can reach me at C S C P R O F. CSC Prof, computing sciences professor, mm-hmm. and same handle on Instagram at CSCPROF. I'm glad you translated that for us because I was trying to think of a song, the first letter of whose lyrics would produce that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, CSC stands for computing sciences and Prof stands for professor. That ain't so bad. The great Jonathan Wiseman, sir, thank you so much. As always, it's a delight. Bob, pleasure is mine. Have a great weekend, and hopefully we hear no more such news in the immediate future. No news is good news in cybersecurity. Amen. Jonathan Wiseman, thank you so much. Take a break. Back in a moment on News Radio Wham 1180. 